This is the first time I'm sharing that I am a dealer of a control substance. <laughs> or you call it a drug dealer. But I am a unique one. I believe I'm the only one in the world who is also a computer science professor <laughs> teaching at the academia. The drug that I deal with is cannabis. But this is not what you think. I started my journey in 2011. A startup asked me to write them a business plan, which I did. And I fell in love with this project. Since then, I've had the privilege of leading one of the world's first pharmaceutical-grade cannabis companies, having a cannabis product in pharmacies being prescribed by physicians to patients. My vision was to find remedy for patients all around the world by using this unique plant. Evidence are showing today that this unique plant is going to change the world. So why have I been so afraid to talk about it with my students here on campus? Why does cannabis, weed or marijuana have such a bad reputation? I'll tell you why. In the 1930s, cannabis was being used by many people all around the world. Its relative, the hemp plant, was being used for producing fibers for the pulp and paper industries. The DuPont family, back then, saw hemp as a future competitor for the production of newspaper. And as of that, they pushed the government to ban the use of this unique plant. After that, in 1937, the act to prohibit cannabis was passed, and the rest is history. For the next 60 years, cannabis was illegal. But since the beginning of this millennium, things have changed. Discussions about cannabis started, and it became more common more and more people started to use it. In Israel, in Canada, in the United States, and lately, also in Europe. Today, we are facing three main challenges. The first one, medical research. In the last couple of years, researchers couldn't touch the plant. But lately, hundreds of new R&D licenses were approved, and scientists started to work with this plant. They wanted to find new ways to better help patients. We are seeing more and more people using this plant because it helps various diseases. Many, many diseases you wouldn't imagine. ALS, Parkinson, cancer, autism, epilepsy, and many more. Most of those diseases have no treatment at all. Some of them have treatments, but with the very bad side effects. The second challenge, the reputation of the plant. Cannabis has come back to our life like an ex-convict that was released from jail, and now he is opening a new page in his life. And I'll give you an example. In 2012, we wanted to renovate our production facility. You know, the place where we grow cannabis. In order to do that, we needed to take a loan, like in any other enterprise. So, I built a solid business plan and went to the bank. After a couple of days, I got a call from the bank with good news. The banker told me the numbers look great. So, what's the problem? 
the banker told me, I just need to know the name of the crop. I told him, what should it matter if it is cucumber, tomatoes, the numbers are right. He insisted. I had no choice. I told him, the name of the crop is medical cannabis. It took him less than 10 seconds to call security. <laughs> I didn't have the chance to show that I have a governmental license. By that time, I was already thrown out of the bank. And that was only seven years ago. The main reason for that is because cannabis is defined according to the FDA as Schedule I, which means it has no benefit for the public. By the way, cocaine is defined as Schedule II, which means it has benefits for the public. <laughs> Go figure. Challenge number three, legalization. But not the one you think. The idea is to take medical cannabis and legalize it for patient use. We want to do all we can in order to bring this product as close as possible to be FDA approved. But think about it for a second. FDA on one hand, and a controlled substance with a bad reputation on the other hand? This is not an easy task. We want to use cannabis and its properties like we use any other plant for its pharmaceutical properties. As for my personal story, it seems to be that I am a drug dealer. <laughs> I had a wonderful journey understanding the involvement of this industry, but all those years I kept it as a secret. As of that, there are two ironies in my life. The first one, I teach for more than a decade. This is the first time I'm telling people what I'm doing when I'm not teaching students. And the second irony, you know what? I must confess. I never tried the product myself. <laughs> Thank you.